Okay, in this video I want to talk about our trigger events and there's a few important things that we need to, to configure in order for this to work, particularly with the on trigger stay event. I'm going to explain that in a sec. So in our game now we can we can actually edit our drag mesh object, we can make it intersect other triggers in the game, and when this happens as we're dragging, we want this selected graphic to turn on. So even if we're here and it over overlaps our mesh, our invisible mesh, we want the trigger to the selected graphic to turn on to say that we want to actually select this unit. So after we've let go of the drag, once we've committed to that selection, we can then say yep, add these units to the currently selected units in the game. So we'll code that in the next couple of videos, but uh, I just want to concentrate on the trigger events for now. I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to say public static boolean. I'm going to call this new trigger event. So this is really important because we actually need to track when a new trigger event's taken place. Because the on trigger stay trigger event is not called on every single frame because it is run on the the physics timer. Okay, so the physics timer doesn't run on every single frame. Um, so what do I mean? Well, as you can see on mono behavior cl uh, class, on trigger stay is defined, but it's an overridable function. And on here, it's stated that on trigger stay is called once per frame on every collider. So the user might think on trigger stay is actually called on every single frame. But on trigger stay is also defined on the collider class. This is the on trigger stay method we use in the game and unity state here it's called almost all the frames so not every frame because it's on the physics timer so it won't necessarily run every frame and this is unpredictable we don't know which frames it will be run and which frames will not be run so we need to actually track where the where the triggers will be called so all we need to do here is say well if this is the case we want to say on trigger event equals true if the new trigger event's been called and uh, in our mouse code I'm going to code everything that needs to happen once that mouse event is true and then we can just make it false again after that so then it will default to false on the next frame if these run it will be turned to true again so that's what we're going to do so we're going to switch the uh, collider uh, the game objects layer so we want our triggers to take place when we are intersecting layer 12 and layer 11. Let's break these for now. So let's indent these. So why do we want layer 12 and layer 11? Because if we hop over to Unity, layer 11 is the ground layer and layer 12 is the select mesh layer. So the select mesh is pretty obvious. We want our drag mesh to interact with the other meshes in the game. But we also want it to interact with our ground because we need to know even if our mesh isn't touching anything. And to know that we need to trigger something to trigger the code so it makes sense to trigger the ground. Okay, so theoretically our trigger events will be going off on every frame in the physics timer. And that's what we want. So if this is the case, if we are actually uh, colliding with layer 12, we can just say new trigger event equals true. Okay, and the same thing with layer 11, really. So, it's not necessarily important on the uh, on trigger enter, but we need to keep things consistent. And I'm going to copy and paste this code and put it into the on trigger stay. Okay. So why have we used both of these methods? Because on trigger enter will be called on the frame the trigger enters the collision. So an on trigger stay will be called the frame after that. Okay, so just the, the way things work in Unity. So that's why we've copied and pasted these two things in here. The most important thing to understand is that on trigger stay is not called every single frame. It's called on almost every single frame. So mono behavior might confuse a few people with that. So th to solve this issue, we need to actually track um, when a new trigger event's being placed. So I actually rendered out the finished project without tracking the trigger events. So I'm just going to drag over the select mesh. And as you can see, it's flashing sometimes. I don't know if my screen recording software is picking this up, but it flashes a few times. When it flashes, the trigger events are not called, so nothing will be selected in the trigger. That's a good one there. So, so that just proves the problem here. We don't want our graphics flashing about like that. We want to actually consistently have them selected. Okay, so that's why we've actually tracked when a new trigger event is taking place. In the next video, we'll finish the code and optimize our game. 
So thanks for watching the video guys, see you in the next video.